Hi, this is Takuma Nakata. I'm an interaction designer based in Kyoto and welcome to my VVV beta graphics tutorial. Uh, so in the, today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to use optical flow and combine real footage together with VV visual. So importing real footage and then applying optical flow to it will allow you to uh, animate the particles based on video input. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's get started. Uh, so in my past, uh, if you scroll down my Instagram, I have this kind of visual that I made in past and together with HP. And this is basically what we're going to reach today. But we're not going this far. I mean, it took me time to color grade and things like that. But I mean, the basic diff uh, basic effect should be, we should learn the basic effect used on this. So there was a still image of this dancer, uh, uh, still video footage of this dancer. And HP wanted me to create like 8K real time thing. Uh, so first of all, they shot this dancer with 8K and I got that footage and I, I, I generated this visual using VVVV and, and overlaid that. And since recently it's kind of like you can't really get out, I thought it would be really interesting to, to... I also personally like seeing footage that are combined together with uh, real footage and computer uh, graphical stuff. So did, I'm also thinking to make how I created this one, but not for today. For today, we're going to reach this one, okay? So, yep, let's get started. Oh, and I also have a 4K archive of this HP project thing. If you haven't watched it, I'll put the link below. Please watch it fully. It's really nice. The music was generated using AI as well. Not fully, but some part. So, but I think the result is really interesting. So please watch this and as a reference for VVV graphics. For today's tutorial, you will need to uh, download DirectX 11 nodes and also DirectX 11 particles pack. So if you haven't installed this, please download it and put it in a packs folder. This one as well. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, so as always, what we need first is the render. Oh wait. I'll just delete this one. So what we're doing today is based on one uh, sample patch from Particle Pack, which one, which is called Texture 2D. Uh, so this one, Force, uh, Directors Modifier Texture 2D. So if you click this and F1 and open up the sample patch of this Force node, it would show you what I want to do today. So do you see it? So what this is doing is, uh, so whenever I move my cursor on top of these particles, it's moving apart, it's adding a velocity to this particle. So you can make an interactive particle installation using this. However, uh, this, Right now, the sample patch only works with a mouse input because it's using this velocity texture thing. And uh, what it's doing is basically it's generating this image out of mouse position. So there's a uh, cylinder, like not cylinder, segment in, in the middle. And when it's X plus, then it changes to red. I think in the other side, it's also changing to red, but, but I'm a colorblind, so I can't see the color really red. So tell me if it's wrong. but when it's going to the x plus axis, I think it's it has r plus, so r as one. When it's going to minus, it has r as minus. I think I think that's what my friend told me. I'm not really familiar with this. So when it's going up, it has green, but green plus one. When it's go down, it's going down. It's generating uh, green minus one. So that's what I bas what it basically have to do. If you want to play with video, you can't really input video to this velocity texture thing so we we need to recreate this to make it uh, uh, possible with a uh, file stream or like live video input to do so we, we will be using this node called optical flow so this optical flow thing if you're familiar with uh, like shaders and stuff I think you've heard of it uh, but what it's basically doing is it's cal it calculates the difference between previous frame and uh, what was it? Previous and actual frame. 
and calculating the difference how far it moved it, it outputs the length and also the difference so you did it move to x-axis or y-axis or things like that and you export that as a texture so that's what it's doing um, so what we'd have to do today is uh, so based on now I'll, add, I'll just recreate this velocity texture thing so I'll create a segment and then another render and then I'll add a constant because I need to render this segment and then just connect this guy to segment ex11 segment is also dx11 so right now uh, this is it and I'll add a transform to the vector and then connect this guy to constant and then I'll connect the mouse position here okay so now I already get uh, a segment moving based on my mouse position but it's right now it's too big so I'll change the scale to uh, point, point 0.5 no it's too small this is okay then uh, just okay so now I got this right so next what I have to do is I have to connect the uh, previous frame and the actual text to optical flow. Actual texture is just an output from the renderer, but the way uh, you generate a previous texture is basically you have to use uh, you just have to use this node called uh, frame delay. What it does is makes a delay. So you there's a lot of frame delay value, three buffer strings, whatever. This time we're using this node called frame delay uh, dx11 texture 2D, and this makes a delay on a texture okay I'm not gonna explain the details okay and then I'll just put these guys out because we need we need to use these okay so everything is out right now I want to rearrange these to the right position okay Okay, and then let's see what kind of texture we have as an output so this preview should be showing okay so right now we're already sort of getting what we want I can see that it's generating a green and a red output so let's see how it goes if I connect optical flow to this texture okay so right now it's not showing anything where's all my particles and that's because this lambda thing is too low and if we put it back to one, all the particles should come back. Okay, came back, but it's, it's, it is affecting, but it's really slow. And I think that's because this thing is too dark, I think. So scale this down to 10. Okay, now it looks brighter. And as you see, the particles are also moving widely. I'll just add a little bit more, so I'll make this to 50. Okay, now it looks like it's moving more dynamically. So I'll put it down, bring it back. Okay, so now I got, I, 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 I succeeded to recreate this velocity texture based on uh, texture output. So we're getting close. Uh, so I'll just rearrange this guy. I'll just put this guy down, this guy up. I'll just delete this guy. Uh, okay, so now we have this mouse input affecting uh, the force velocity. Oh, what happened? Oh shit, I deleted the mouse node. Mouse, I'll change it to window. Okay. So right now, the, when I go up, the particles go up. Then when I go down, the particles go down. When I go right, the particles go left. Oh, that's wrong, man. <laughs> so in default optical flow, uh, I, I don't know why this is, but it, it has different uh, axis for X and Y so when I go left the particles goes right what I have to do is I just have to add my mi minus change this 1 to minus 1 of this P offset XY 
So by doing this, you can easily make it work correctly, right? So now everything is working in the same dire correct direction. So that which means this optical effect is working properly, proper, prop, properly. So yeah, so this is basically what I wanted to do. So once this is done, I just have to connect whatever video to this and and see if it's really working correctly. So let's let's do that. So what I'll be using is this node called texture uh, for no file stream. These are the nodes. If you want to play videos inside VVVV, this is what you have to use. Uh, file stream. I use this recently. I've always been using this file stream DX11 texture VLC because it allows uh, you to use whatever format that's uh, usable inside VLC, which means most of the format compression is works. Uh, compression works. So I'll use this one and then file name. And here I'll add a file that I have in my desktop. I'm not in my desktop. My folder. Uh, gotcha. The one thing. And then I'll press play and also loop. Okay, so now I should have this video playing. It is playing, right? Okay, so I'll connect this guy to previous frame and actual frame and see how it works. Hmm. I'm not seeing anything. I'll create another layer uh, with full screen quad and then I'll put this one here and then uh, make the particles overlay so it's in the second okay so as you see it's sort of like affecting it I would just change the distance to make the particles closer so look look when whenever she moves the particles are moving, right? And whenever she moves stronger, like this one, the particles move faster. Hmm. Is it? It doesn't. Oh, well, it is, right? Um, right now, I mean, the effect might be a bit different than what you want, and that's and you can change that by tweaking the color. So right now I think the let's see, let me see if you, I think the video that I have here, the black is not black, it's a bit gray. So I'll change the contrast using HSCV C B node. And I'll change the contrast higher and then brightness a little bit higher. So that background is actually black. And then I'll connect this one to frame uh to previous frame and actual text, uh, previous texture and actual text. And so with this, I think I should get a better result. I, I am getting a better result, but for some reason, uh, when it moves faster, it looks like it's moving slower. But anyway, I think it's some sort of problem that I think my values inside this optical flow is something wrong. Maybe I just have to multiply this 10. Yeah, now it's more dynamic. You can actually see wherever she moves, all the particle will just re uh, move away from her. But uh, basically what you have to do is change these values uh maybe changing lambda or adding a blur to it might change something there's quite a lot to play with it but if once you start playing with this texture you should reach out the right re like the result like i just added a blur and now it looks a bit better right so this is basically it uh if you want to get something similar to this one uh, what i did is i added a scale by lifetime node and I also changed this sprite to Fong. And then I changed 
so that it, I can use box and then I use box and then I use header heading which I already explained in my previous uh, tutorial so if you haven't watched my previous particle packs tutorial please watch that one and combine your technique learning from that one and this one you should be able to create something like these or these and uh, optical flow basically works on top of any video right now it works really nice because the background is black but uh, optical flow basically takes stuff that's moving the pixel that's moving so if you have if you use a tripod and capture your video and if you dance on uh, in front of the camera if the background is not moving you should still get a, a, the same result as this one so you don't really have to use greenback or whatever something else to key color key the background so yeah that was it for today hope this helps uh thanks for watching and see you next time